All right, folks, it's the appliance guru coming back at you with another video. One thing I've noticed, we've been going out to calls a lot recently where um, the client hasn't been properly uh, trained or uh, demoed how to use their dishwasher properly. Okay, so I'm going to go through some basic um, cycles and options that these dishwashers have. Um, they look different on all models of dishwashers, but essentially they do the same thing. Okay, so first informational video about these new uh, dishwashers. I have a KitchenAid. Um, they are energy and water efficient. So you have to remember that when something is water efficient, things change. These new dishwashers that you will be getting uh, from this point on or from, I want to say a good five to six years back forward. So starting maybe 2015 uh, or earlier than that, depending on the models, um, they use a lot less water. So they are not like your older dishwashers, which fill up with a bunch of water and they just spray the heck out of your dishes. The motors are also a lot smaller. The spray motors for the propellers. So um, you're going to notice the first thing is when you purchase a new dishwasher, if your dishwasher is very old, right? If you've you know replaced it in the last... I don't know 10 years you're not going to notice it but you're going to notice that it takes a long time to run a cycle the reason for that is since there's not enough there's not enough water to completely submerge the propellers I, while spraying both the upper and lower rack it's only going to do one rack at a time because if it tries to spray both racks at a time it won't have enough water to do so you know uh, the motor will run dry. So um, in order to combat that, manufacturers started only letting one propeller, so the bottom rack or the top rack, spray at a time. The other thing is these new motors that draw in a lot less electricity are um, not as powerful as the older motors, so um, they wouldn't have enough power to push all that water with all that pressure to get the, the food off of your dishes. So these are going to be doing one rack at a time. That's why the cycles are so much longer. Okay, so in any dishwasher you purchase, you're going to have your cycle selections, right? So you're going to have something in my KitchenAid that is the Pro Wash. Tough wash, normal, light, express, rinse. You might have, instead of express, you might have something that says an one hour wash or quick wash. Um, that's usually about one hour and it's gonna run through just about everything as quickly as possible don't expect your dishes to come out very clean so express wash light wash quick wash I'm sorry express wash quick wash or one hour wash it's gonna be here then you're gonna have your light normal and tough normal is gonna be the most water efficient and electricity efficient uh, cycle why these are manufactured because the engineers know that most people will just hit normal and then start. So they make this the most energy and water efficient uh, cycle. Then you have tough wash. Um, then you have tough wash, which um, it, if you have a lot more um, stained or, or uh, food that's stuck on the dishes, tough wash is gonna be your to go if you're washing pots and pans with stuck food on them. Um, light if you just kind of want to um, give them you've, you've pre-washed them and you want to give them another quick wash um, rinse only is if you have like some very expensive um, dishes that you put away and you only bring out when company is over they're already clean you just need them to be rinsed off I never ever um, recommend people use pro wash or sensor wash um, those are the other names for this type of wash. It's a pro wash sensor sensor wash. Um, I believe there's there's some other name for these on different model numbers, but they all pretty much just do the same thing. And let me explain. So with pro wash or sensor wash, what ends up happening is you see these propellers. I'm gonna take them off, and I want to show you guys something. So. There is, oh man, I'm gonna have to drain it to show you. There is this little sensor here. 
you can kind of see it. I'm going to drain it and I'll, I'll circle back around to you guys. You can kind of see the sensor here, which detects how uh, dirty the water is, right? Oh, I got to clean my filter. Check that out. So it detects how dirty the water is. Um, and what happens is it's going to try to run the cycle for longer than it should. If there's the water's very soapy, it's going to try to just keep running and running and running the cycle. It gets confused. I don't like it. I don't recommend people to use it. I really dislike on anything, on washers, dryers, dishwashers. I dislike anything that um, does any type of sensor washing where it washes or it, di it dictates how long it washes based on a sensor. Sensors fail. Sensors can get tricked. Um, they don't work perfectly. So I don't recommend anybody ever use any type of sensor, um, any type of sensor uh, wash on their washer machines dryers dishwashers okay so now you go to the options you see the options here you have heat dry high temp wash sandy rinse four hour delay control locks right so the heat dry is self-explanatory it's going to turn on the heater to try to dry your dishes the high temp wash is going to um, try to uh, get the water to a really high temperature by turning on the heater um, sandy rinse pretty much uh, boils up the water or gets the water really hot during the rinse instead of just allowing the water coming in hot from the tap because these are connected to your hot water um, valve underneath and it, um, it, it, it tries to sanitize everything. Four hour delay, say you have company over, you guys are you know, uh, having a nice conversation at the dinner table, you don't wanna hear your washing machine running in the background, so you put a four hour delay so that you don't forget to start it later control lock if you have little ones running around pushing buttons you can lock the controls if you need to cancel the drain the cycle you hit the cycle uh, cancel drain and it will stop the cycle I advise all my clients if they're gonna leave the house do not let your dishwasher or washing machine run while you're not able to attend it if you're leaving the house or if you can't immediately go and shut off the water valve, don't let it run. I've seen a lot of catastrophic failures where people leave the house while their washing machine is running or their dishwasher is running and they come home to a pool in their kitchen or a pool where their laundry room used to be. Don't do that. Okay, so now that we've gone over the cycles, I recommend people you should always use rinse aid you can either do finisher cascade we just buy whatever's on sale at the time don't do generic brands do finish or cascade and always use pods you see how i don't stick to one brand i just buy whatever's on sale finish rinse cascade pods you can also buy the cascade pods one thing about these um these uh pods if you ever notice these things are blown up or they're expanded and you can see little bumps popping out on the sides. Do not use them. The enzymes, these are the enzymes. They have died and they're no longer good. If you ever have one closed and you see it popping out of the sides, blown up, don't use it. Get another box. Those pods will go in this little pocket here. And they, when it releases, it'll start washing your dishes. You also want to make sure that your rinse, you keep rinse inside of here at all times, and you turn it up to the max rinse, which is four. Every, almost every dishwasher has this little knob that you can turn it up. It looks like I'm gonna have to be uh, be uh, filling it up pretty soon. When it's all when it's full, this whole little peep um, hole is going to be blue. When it's empty, it's going to be silver. So mine is almost empty. So I'm going to have to fill it soon. Okay, you want to clean out the filter, which I also have to do soon. You turn this propeller, you grab it from the bottom, turn it counterclockwise. You see how I'm grabbing it? This thing spins. The little bottom base spins. You turn it counterclockwise, you pull it off, 
you pull your filters out and then you rinse these in your sink depending on how often you use your dishwasher you might want to do that every couple of weeks if you're a small family you only use it once a month you do that every couple of months i clean mine out maybe once a month and i have a four person family in my household and then you pop this bad boy back on sometimes it's a little bit it's a little bit uh It's a little bit tricky because I'm leaning into it. I have dishes and I'm gonna pause the video, give me a second. Okay, so I got that back on. Very easy to put on and take off. Push this bad boy back in and then you start your cycle. What you wanna do with your dishes is do not pre-wash your dishes. And I'm gonna tell you why in a second. We're gonna go circle back around to the uh, pods. Do not pre-wash your dishes. You want to take your dish, anything bigger than a pea size, bones, nuts, seeds, um, anything bigger than a pea size, you wanna come over to your trash can and put all that down. Now, if you have egg yolk, coffee stains, sauce, pasta sauce, soy sauces on the dish, leave them on there. Do not pre-wash your dishes. You might think that you're helping out your dishwasher. You might think that they're going to come out cleaner. They will not because the way these pods work, and let me show you, that's why you want to use these new pods because this is how they work. The enzymes are The enzymes, sorry I was getting a call in, these enzymes are these white, this white powder here. And what happens is, these are getting little, my pods are getting old and I have to replace them because they're starting to leak. So anyways, the enzymes activate with the water. And what ends up happening is, these enzymes get into the water, you see them, and as, they, as the propellers are spraying the water onto the dish, the enzymes will start breaking down the food, the stains, all the stuff that's on your dish and breaking it down, bringing it back down into the water. Now, after the enzymes do that, you'll have the soap, which will come in and it'll start kind of uh, uh, scrubbing everything with the soap. You see how a little bit of soap these use? Very little soap and my dishes come out clean. After the soap um, um, scrubs everything, then you have your rinse aid that comes in and it's kind of a booster to the rinse that already gets dispensed in your dishwasher some people i go over to their house and they're filling up the little square cup all the way all the way to the top now i know it says on there the manufacturer tells you you can use liquid soap or powder soap but that's the same manufacturer that is giving you this pro wash that in my opinion doesn't wash very well so who are you going to listen to a technician that works on these things every day um and look at look at the soap in this pot look at how little bit of soap that is that's almost nothing you don't need a lot of soap because the, it uses very little water and some people fill this thing up all the way oh you see my uh i don't remember if i closed this but i'm anyway i'm gonna leave it open um look at how much room it leaves you to put in soap now compare those two that is not a lot of soap in comparison um don't use a lot of soap it will create a lot of suds and if you use too much of it it will um it could over sud and then water uh suds out of your dishwasher so that's all i have for now like i said I've worked on every type of dishwasher there is. Just about all of them have um, these type of settings, the same settings or equal to these settings. Sorry, move the camera. These type of settings or equal to these settings. Um, use pods, use rinse aid, clean out your filter every once in a while. Another big tip is run your hot water for a little bit. You know, you want to conserve water, I understand that, unless you have a circulating pump attached to your heater. The circulating pump will circulate the hot water all through your house, so you always have 
instant hot water. If you do not have a circulating pump, run this for a little bit, you feel the water getting a little bit warm, close the tap, because then, down here, where your dishwasher is connected to, where is the dishwasher hose? Where your dishwasher is connected, I don't know why mine is blue on the end, but where your dishwasher is connected to the valve, then it would feed hot water to it non-stop. So those are my tips for best practices in, in using your dishwasher. So you don't have to call me out for something simple. Next up, I'm gonna be doing a video on washing machines, on dryers, and I'm gonna do quick fixes that I always see on these dishwashers. Thank you for, for watching the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share this with somebody that needs to you know, be taught how to use their dishwasher properly. All right, bye-bye.